Everyone says I love you But just what they say it for I never knew It's just inviting trouble for the poor sucker who says I love you I love good music So do I, let's get out of here Sit down Before I get through with you, you will have a clear case for divorce, and so will my wife. Now, the first thing to do is to arrange for a settlement. You take the children, your husband takes the house. Junior burns down the house, you take the insurance, and I take you. But I haven't any children. That's just the trouble with this country. You haven't any children. And as for me, I'm going back in the closet where men are empty overcoats. Hello, YouTube and YouTubeettes. Welcome to a Marx Brothers movie review. I am Robbo. And I am Becco. And today we're going to review the Marx Brothers movie, Monkey Business, which came out in 1931. On a transatlantic crossing, the Marx Brothers get up to their usual antics and manage to annoy just about everyone on board the ship. So, Becco, tell us who this uh, who's in this cast. The Marx Brothers play themselves. Then we have Rockcliffe Fellows, who plays Joe Helton. Harry Woods plays Briggs. Thelma Todd is Lucille. Ruth Hall is Mary Helton. And Tom Ken Kennedy is Gibson. All right. So, let's talk about the plot first. And I, it seems like there's two plots going on. First of all, there's the Marx Brothers as stowaways, which only lasts, what would you say, about three-fourths of the movie? Mm -hmm. And then you've got the two gangsters that comes in maybe a quarter of the way through the movie, but uh, goes all the way to the end. So you kind of got two storylines. What thoughts do you have on the plot? Or I guess you could say plural plots. <laughs> They didn't really stand out to me as much. Um, a lot of it was just a bunch of them being chased around and hiding from the crew. Some of the plot with the gangsters was a little hard to follow. Uh, it wasn't very like specific about who they were and, and what they were doing. You couldn't really tell if they were businessmen or if they were criminals because it just didn't get really... They were kind of vague about what what they were doing. Yeah, so I think the uh, storyline of them being stowaways kind of allows the Marx Brothers to run loose. And I feel like they're more free in this movie than the, they had in the first two. And uh, then the two gangsters, I don't feel like there's... Uh, it, kind of, it kind of makes you more sympathetic to Joe Helton. But in reality, they're both gangsters, so they're both kind of bad guys. But I feel like in terms of villains, this one was much better than the one that was in Coconuts in terms of seeming, making you hate him. So yeah, I think storyline-wise, it wasn't great. I mean, there wasn't much in depth, but I think a lot of little, there's a lot of random things that happen in this movie that are great. So what what score do you give for the story of this? I give the storyline a four. And I gave it an eight. And do you have any favorite scenes in terms of that aren't necessarily the funniest scene, but maybe in terms of like storyline scenes? Not particularly. It was really hard to figure out what the plot was. So a lot of it really was just a bunch of funny scenes strung together. And so I don't necessarily have, I, I put down that I, my favorite one was the, the barber scene where they're giving a man a shave. And, and so it doesn't necessarily contribute to the, any kind of story, but I don't know that that's really the point of the, of the movie. Mm -hmm. A couple that stick out to me, I guess you could say if, you're, if we talk about the storyline of the two gangsters, well, the, the Marx Brothers who are much more uh, focal in the storyline. They don't just help the main story like they do in the first two, where they're kind of uh, obviously main characters, but kind of background to the main plot, and they help the main plot. Whereas this one, they are the main plot, except for they're kind of parallel to the other main plot. 
But uh, I picked the Chevalier imitations, even though it's very funny. You could almost say the Marx Brothers were criminals themselves in this. But my story for the pl my score for the pl plot or the story is an eight out of ten. Okay, so what did you think about the quality of the movie? I would give the quality uh, of the movie an eight. This one was definitely improved from the last films. I think it's because this one was actually created to be a movie and not just a filmed play. The script was a little tighter and the just the filming of everything, um, even just in a few short years, movies improved and it just kind of flowed a lot better. Yeah, it, it felt more like a movie to me. The first two were made for stage, and then they converted it into a movie, and it almost looked like a stage play, even in the film. But this one, the quality uh, was much better. I also feel like it was more, there was more space. It felt more spacious, and not like it was filmed on a stage, even though Animal Crackers did feel more spacious than uh, Coconuts, but this one even more so. Yeah, there was also some really good special effects with like the frog. Oh, yeah. And different things that were like really interesting sight gags mm -hmm. that in the other movies you had some slapstick, some pratfalls, mm -hmm. and then there was just the, the talking that was funny. But this yeah. one had some really like well thought out, good, technically good uh, sight gags that would have taken a little bit more skill than just what what they did in the other movies. Mm -hmm. So what did uh, did you have any thoughts on like costumes or um nothing really stood out. There weren't any as many like formal scenes or where they're actually wearing something fancy the the, the ladies don't really uh, stand out in this one as much as the just the guys. Although there is that costume party at the end. Oh, there was. Remember at Joe Hilton's? Oh, yes. There was that at the end. It almost felt like that part was a different movie. Oh, yeah. Uh, because it, it's yeah, like it a totally different setting. Yeah. And, yeah, it was, yeah. Mm -hmm. It was it was interesting. They, they also did some funny gags with the costume, the costuming there. Mm -hmm. But they were really more just like funny costumes than than anything that was really spectacular. Something I noticed, so in the first two movies, when you see a crowd in the background, they're just kind of standing there, almost like it would be on a stage. Mm -hmm. But on this one, the crowd in the background, it looks more realistic, like they're talking and yeah. doing other things. So what what's your score for the quality? I give the quality of this one an 8. And I give it a 9. All right, next we're going to talk about the music. There's not much to talk about, but what did you think about the few songs or things that you heard? Yeah, the music didn't really stand out as much in this film. There was a couple of songs I liked, Har Harpo with the opera song, and then um, Chico's song on the piano. The thing about his playing is that it's not that he's technically that great, but he's just kind of unique and entertaining. And he has sort of a style in how he plays that no one else really has that he kind of came up on his own. Yeah, I. it's funny because when I think of Chico and Harpo piano and harp scenes, uh, they kind of do that in all their movies or most of them. Mm -hmm. But this one, it doesn't. that scene doesn't stick out to me as much as other movies that mm -hmm. they've done. But musically, I do like the intro where they're in the barrels and they're singing a cappella. The sweet Adeline. Yeah. And I heard that you could actually hear four voices at, at, at a point. And yeah. some people wonder if Harpo actually sings. And that's even in the quote, uh, the, mm -hmm. the reason that they knew there were four stowaways, even though they hadn't seen them yet, uh -huh. is because Sweet Adeline is a quartet song. Yeah. So that's the joke. For people in that in those days, know that Sweet Adeline is a quartet song. Nowadays, yeah. the joke doesn't make sense because mm -hmm. 
people don't aren't familiar with that song. So it's kind of interesting that we might hear Harpo's voice in there. Yeah, I was even as we were watching it or just afterwards I was thinking maybe we should listen to that a little closer. Yeah. The other um the one music scene that sticks out that is my favorite even though it's really short, it's when the Marx brothers are kind of all on the run and then they stop and <laughs> start playing a song and mm-hmm. then they like that lasts like <laughs> 10 seconds and then they run up run off again and the crowd applauses yeah but it's like um there's trumpets and flutes and i don't remember what they were all playing but or guitars maybe and who knows what if they were really playing i think groucho was playing the saxophone and it was kind of off tune so he may have really been playing it yeah it sounded like they were really playing it and the funny thing is is that they don't seem to really care about getting caught because <laughs> mm-hmm. they don't really do a very good job of hiding. Yeah. And it kind of adds to their sort of nonchalant, I don't care kind of thing to where, yes, they're, it's like they don't really believe that they'll get in trouble. So mm-hmm. they're kind of running from them, but also the people who are trying to catch them are just extremely dumb. Mm-hmm. Sometimes they're literally right behind their backs and every time they turn, they yeah. they miss them. So it's just one of those it's part of the comedy is that they're not really trying that hard yeah. to to not be caught and yet they still yeah. aren't caught. But I do love that random scene and that music, it's really brief, but I think it's pretty cool too. So what do you what do you what score do you give for the music? I give the music a five. It was it was okay and it was really funny. There just wasn't a whole lot of it. And I give it a three. Because it's very brief and it doesn't, not, none of the music sticks out to me or, or is that memorable. All right, now we're going to talk about the acting performances and uh, which, what, uh, what did you think of the non Marx Brothers in this? Um, the, the extras were all really good. I felt like all of the background characters were all just, they looked like professional actors, which many of the other movies, the people in the background didn't seem to really know how to interact or react very well. But in this one, they were all quite good. Even really small parts actually were really well acted. Uh, my favorite one was Thelma Todd. And um, she's just a really good actress. And just a little behind the scenes thing is the shortly after this movie was made. And I don't know if she was in another Marx Brothers movie after this or if that was yes. her only well, it must have been shortly after that Horse one feathers. is she was killed yeah. mysteriously. And I think it was she, gang related, too. Yeah, I think one of her husband or a boyfriend or something was a criminal. And she died pretty young. She was like 30, close to 30 mm-hmm. uh, when she died. And and it's it's sad because she had a lot of talent. She was a really good comedian that's kind of creepy that she's in this movie where she's the wife of a gangster and she ends up really dying from i I don't know if her husband was a gangster do you know uh i don't i I read the i read the details once and they i don't recall them now but Mm -hmm. yeah i really liked how she played off of groucho and in that she could match him like on wits you know Mm -hmm. what i mean like she could be just as funny as he was yeah they're in the scenes their relationship was much different than groucho and margaret dumont's whereas he Mm -hmm. was he never really made fun of thelma todd's thelma todd as much or what what's her character name lucille is the character okay so yeah and i feel like his his relationship with her was flirtatious just like it is with margaret dumont but it's not he doesn't make fun of her as much yeah, it's it's definitely they're more equals mm-hmm. in how they're playing off of each other. Yeah. And it's like with Margaret Dumont, she it's not that one of them was worse or better, it's that she was like in a different place. She was like the field. straight man, the straight she was, character. Yeah, she was like a, a, yeah. a, somewhere else. She her acting and the way she did, it's like she was in one world and he was in another world. Mm-hmm. Now, overall, the uh, non-Marx Brothers, I thought there was a couple of weak actors. I think the the 
the one that plays her husband wasn't a great actor. The way he said his lines were kind of... Yeah, it was the very cheesy 1930s gangster stereotype, mm -hmm. for sure. But having said that, I thought he was, he was a better villain than the guy in Coconuts. Mm -hmm. And then the girl that plays the daughter, she's cute, but um, not a great actress. Mm -mm. Um, but I thought Joe Helton was pretty good, and obviously Thelma Todd, and she's also my favorite. And uh, none of the other, I oh the <laughs> a couple of small bit parts, but the uh, the guy that plays the uh, the captain is pretty good. Yes, and there was also another guy that I think he's the one that plays the guy that gets a frog in his throat. Oh, okay. he was really good. Uh huh. But uh, he, yeah, he stood out to me, mm. even though he didn't even really have a name. He was just a guy. He came on a few times, I want to say, mm. but and he was really good. When they're doing their Chevalier imitations, is it the captain that does Chevalier? Eh? <laughs> I believe, it, yeah, that was actually he's, the captain. He's really right? funny. Yes, his uh, reactions. It, I never really, it didn't, for some reason, I never really considered that as the same person, but I guess it is, mm -hmm. or I didn't really think about Oh, and also, the lady that's really in a one scene that is more like Margaret Dumont de Groucho, mm -hmm. where she's kind of the snobby, rich lady, and oh, she's yes. talking to the reporters, Yes, and uh, Groucho kind of makes fun of her. Yeah. So she's kind of more like Margaret Dumont, the way Groucho treats mm -hmm. her, but she was really good. Yeah. So, yeah, Thelma Todd is also my favorite. Now, of the Marx Brothers, what are your thoughts on their performances? I thought it was all really good. I It was hard to choose, like, a favorite one, but um, I really liked it. And, again, this is another one where uh, Zeppo shines a little bit in comedy, and so... Yeah, some of that some of that stuff with Harpo though, when he's doing that puppet show is is gold. So it, it it's hard not to always have Harpo be a favorite, uh, but he definitely stands out. Yeah, I I agree. I think Harpo's my favorite. And uh, I think Groucho his his jokes are a little bit cornier in this one than they were in Animal Crackers to me. Mm -hmm. And uh, Chico, I think Chico, this is his best performance so far. Yeah. He was really good. And and obviously Zeppo had a bigger, much bigger role. Mm -hmm. And uh, my favorite scene with Zeppo is when he goes, Mary, I'll never leave you. And then he immediately, he immediately runs off. Leaves, yeah. But yeah, so they're kind of all equals. And I was going to mention this earlier, but uh, Groucho is usually... Um, kind of more high not high society but he's usually in the he's usually above the others like he's got a real job or whatever mm -hmm. but in this one he's like equal they're all four kind of yeah stowaways together and they're all kind of yeah know. so what is your score for the overall performances uh i put an, an eight for performance and i also got an eight all right now let's talk about the humor in this movie what did you think about it? This one was really funny, and I felt like it wasn't trying to be anything else than what it was. You know, when mm -hmm. the, the, the first couple of movies had, like, these very iconic type of plots, like a mystery or, you know, some a mix-up or something like that. But this one was just them running around, acting foolish, and there wasn't a whole lot of constraint on what that needed to be. And it was just them moving from scene to scene as they're kind of fleeing from. So there's a scene where they're like cutting in a barber's shop, cutting a guy's mustache. And then there's another scene where someone is ill and they're going to like do surgery on them. And then there's another scene where they're pretending to be Maurice Chevalier. Yeah. Which it, which was a real performer at the time. Yeah. Um. And and it just kind of jumps to that to that to that. Um. Mm. And then it sort of ends with that big kind of scuffle at the end, which is funny. So it doesn't have like as many plot plot points as the other two, where you could actually tell the story of what was happening. 
This was just them kind of running amok on a ship. Yeah. There's a lot of short, funny bits. Like, yeah. And it just kept moving. It was a very fast-paced movie. I think the Harpo with the puppets was was hilarious. Just classic. And the kids mm-hmm. laughing and all of that. The Chevalier yeah. scene, which I mentioned earlier, is also great. And I, that, I, fact, fun fact about that is that was actually from one of their vaudeville plays, I think called Humor Risk, or mm-hmm. I'll Say She Is, or one of those. Yeah, so that scene was, was actually from a previous play that they did. Yeah. And so every one of them, like, it fit their character. So you start with Zeppo, and he just does it basically you know, very basic inter- impersonation. And then Chico's next, and he's pretty funny. <laughs> but, he, of course, he uses his accent within the yeah. lyrics. And then Groucho comes in, and, uh, you know, he's really funny. And he, mm-hmm. <laughs> I think the lady that, that he was making fun of was behind him. And yeah. He, and they said, you can't be him. Look at your face. And he goes, well, look at that face. And he points at her. Yeah. And then they goes, he doesn't have a mustache. And uh, anyway, he was hilarious. But Harpo just stood out. He was a step ahead above yes. any of them. And he comes in walking on the table and then throwing the, the yeah. paperwork everywhere. It's, he's like a toddler. It's like a game to him. Yeah. And they don't really care. It's like they're really not trying that hard. <sighs> To convince them that they're actually Chevalier. Yeah. They are they don't care. They literally do not care. Mm-hmm. They don't really, it's, you know, when it, it's like when you're babysitting kids that don't respect the authority because they don't think they're going to get in trouble. They can do whatever they want. Yeah. So it's kind of like that where they didn't have, they weren't trying that hard to, to get, to get through. Mm-hmm. So. And it doesn't really explain, like, why are they still ways? <laughs> uh-huh. Where where are they going? Are they escaping from something, or, or are they trying to go to somewhere? Mm-hmm. Um, I don't even remember if it really explains where the ship was going from yeah. and where it was going to. And so it I think doesn't... somebody said that you see the New York City skyline, but I don't know if that's yeah, the beginning or Maybe end. they're coming from Europe to New York City, but... Mm-hmm. It doesn't yeah. even matter. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't even matter. It's just mm-hmm. they're there and it's funny. Now, another thing is, so after they get off the ship, I feel like the uh, last bit at the uh, house was a little bit more slower paced. But Groucho had a few funny things that he was mm-hmm. doing. And Zeppo was more like, played more of a straight role where he was like seriously becoming a hero. and Yeah. Not- while Groucho and Chico really were kind of nonchalant about the whole thing. It's like they really didn't care yeah. about her getting kidnapped. But Zeppo was taking it seriously. Mm-hmm. But in the costume scene, Groucho had a few funny lines and things. But Harpo just kept doing these really random, like where he's under the lady's dress, which is, what do you call that? Where it looks like a big butt. On the back of a dress. It, it's like a bustle. A bustle. And it and she really doesn't have a bustle. It's just Harpo hiding. Oh, <laughs> he's he, still it's hiding. It's like he's in this giant nightgown that yeah. looks like it's part of her dress. Yeah. And he keeps attaching himself to different people. So I guess Groucho, well, I'm trying to think. So Groucho's a friend of Joe Helton. No, Chico and Harpo are friends of Joe mm-hmm. Helton. They were his bodyguards. But I think he he was friends with Groucho as, as well. But at the beginning, uh, Groucho is not able to get in for some reason. So they kind of have to sneak in. But Harpo is still hiding for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. And then and then also when he goes, now let me introduce the prettiest little thing. And then Harpo pops out. Oh, yeah. And then uh, also when he plays the harp, it's actually a lady playing at first. And then he peeks around and scares her off. And then when the opera singer is doing, like, all over the place, Mm -hmm. Groucho acts like he's getting tortured. Yes. I mean, did I say Groucho? Harpo acts like he's being tortured. But Harpo just is just a step ahead throughout the whole movie, a step above. Mm -hmm. So what is your score for the humor? I have the humor as an eight. And I gave it a nine. 
something that I I I wasn't didn't really think about this, but some I was listening to another Marx Brothers review, and they said this is one of their least favorite endings to a Marx Brother movie, hmm. but it where it ends in a barn. Yeah, it it does feel like you're watching a completely different movie. And because a lot of Marx Brothers have similar themes and they often like they literally play the same characters sometimes mm -hmm. with different names, you know? Yeah. And maybe in a different setting that that's always going to be a scene that I never will connect to that movie. Yeah. You know, like I'll probably always think it's like oh, that must be from a different movie. Mhm. Mm well, it's like the the uh, what do you call it when they they have the uh, win at the end. Well, I think in coconuts, the jewelry was stolen, mm -hmm. and then there's this whole scene, and they build up to something that gets resolved. In animal crackers, there's you know the paintings that gets resolved at the end, kind of. Yeah. Although it, it's not really that big of a deal, but in this one, it seems like she gets kidnapped near the end. Yeah. So it's almost like there's no. Like the resolve is just really. It almost quick. feels like another film. Like yeah. now we're in another it, movie. It wasn't like if she had been kidnapped on the ship, mm -hmm. and of course, then there would be no costume party. And is this the but, one that just ends with a cow? Like, does he care? Yeah, pick the, up a, uh, a baby Grab shows cow? in a, a hay, and he go, and he they go, "What are you doing?" And he goes, "I'm looking for a needle in the haystack." Well, he he, he yeah. has all these different lines, and then yeah. he's like the the sportscaster kind of. Yeah, Groucho and Chico are doing random things. They're playing, but like games. in the end, there's like a baby yeah. cow that Har yeah. I think Harpo picks up. Yeah, and that's like they're like mm -hmm. the love scene in the end of the movie yeah. is is Harpo so and that baby cow. It doesn't feel like there's a, a like enough intensity to build to that scene because yeah, it, the her she gets kidnapped like. 10 15 minutes before the end. So yeah. that's probably the weakest part of the movie. So Becco, what is your final score for Monkey Business? My final score is 6.8. And I get a 7.9. Passport. I said passport, not paperwork. Come on with a passport. Not watch boy. Passport. You're awfully glum. I was just thinking, after the boat lands, I may never see you again. Does it matter to you? Whether you ever see me again? I can't think of anything in the world that matters more. Mary, I'll never leave you.